Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to another episode of the Euro Cooking Canuck. On today's segment of Clearly Canadian, I'm going to be making something that is clearly not diet food. <laughs> this is everything you want and nothing more, believe me. What we're making today is decadent, creamy, and rich. And what we're going to be making is Canadian cheddar cheese soup. Now, this soup is so popular that down in Epcot, Disney's Epcot in Florida, there is a restaurant in the Canadian Pavilion that serves this soup. I hear it's impossible to get reservations, and this recipe is Disney's most requested recipe. It's that good. So guys, let's go in my kitchen and make amazing Canadian cheddar cheese soup. <laughs> As usual, welcome to the kitchen countertop. I have all the ingredients we're going to need to make this amazing Canadian cheddar soup. So obviously, you're going to need cheddar. I have here a pound of um, mature white cheddar, okay? And I'm going to grate this myself. Now guys, you can buy pre-grated cheddar cheese. However, I strongly advise that you do not. And the reason being is because there's often agents um, in the bag of the shredded cheddar cheese to help it not stick together. And sometimes those agents can be, believe it or not, sawdust. Mm -hmm. So um, I advise you to shred your own. Save some money too, because you're paying for that service and you're paying for the packaging. Um, and also, because of those agents, sometimes the cheese won't melt properly. So, do yourself a favor and buy a real block of cheese, okay? Right. Now, I have an array of ingredients here. You're going to need about a pound of bacon, which I've cut up into small pieces. Now, in order to do this very easily, um, you can stick your bacon in the freezer for about 15 minutes until it kind of gets firm. You don't want it frozen solid. And, um, and then you can cut it into little pieces. Okay. Now I'm using a, about a pound here. However, um, you can use about a half pound, but I want to save more for the garnish at the end. <laughs> here I have some celery finely diced. It's three stalks of celery. Over here I have one large red onion diced. And if anyone can please tell me why they're called red onions, comment down below and let me know because clearly they're purple. They're purple. Right. I have in here one cup of all-purpose flour. Over here I have a half a stick or three tablespoons of room temperature soft butter or you can use margarine. I also have room temperature, whole fat milk. There's four cups here. Guys, do not use skim milk um, because it just won't bind together. The soup will not be proper. You can use 2% if you like. Oops, sorry for the noise. Over here I have three cups of chicken stock or broth you can use. Um, I've just heated it up a little bit in the microwave because it was starting to get cool on me. You're also going to need, which made the noise, a dark beer or lager. Um, and I love my old retro opener that I got in Macedonia. I don't know how old this thing is, but it's so cool. And this side recaps the bottle, or the cap rather. Very cool. So you're going to need a half a cup of warm or room temperature. Dark beer. Right, so we got that. You're also going to need a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, or Worcestershire sauce, however you want to call it. And you're going to need a tablespoon of Tabasco. 
I'm using Frank's Red Hot because I love the flavor of this and I put this shit on everything, as the commercial says. <coughs> if you want to use Tabasco, go ahead, use Tabasco, but I love the flavor of Frank's. Um, it's, you know, it's not the hottest and you can get an extra hot, but it's, there's flavor in here. You can actually taste the peppers. So this is why I love Frank's so much. Right guys? This is everything. That's it. That's all you need. So first step is I'm going to start browning my bacon in my pot and I'll be back and show you what I do next. Hey guys, all right, welcome back to the stove. I have my bacon going. It's getting very crispy. And at this point, I'm gonna remove some for garnish later. And I'm glad I did the pound because to me it just doesn't seem enough. All right, so I have the bacon in here. And what I'm gonna do now is add the butter. Steamy. And that melts up pretty quickly. Give it a stir till it all melts. And then what I'm gonna add in is my celery and my onions. Or sorry, yeah, celery and onions. point what I'm going to do is saute these until the vegetables become soft and a little translucent. And the bacon's still in there but there's the butter and the fat from the bacon. <clears throat> if you find your bacon isn't as fatty you can add um, about a teaspoon or so of oil or vegetable oil or olive oil and whatnot. So I'm going to continue sauteing the onions with the celery, celery and the bacon and I'll be back. Hey gang, so now my onions are getting nice and tender and translucent, the celery as well. So at this point in the game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the one cup of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to stir this until we make our roux, which is going to be like a really thick paste. So keep going. Don't stop. And as you can see, it's becoming very, very, very thick. almost like a dough. And this comes together really quickly. And the reason we do this is for a couple of reasons. Well, one is to make a beautiful sauce, and for two is to cook out the raw flour flavor. It should become nutty. As you can see, it's almost balling up into like a dough. Picking up all those flavors from the bottom of the pot as well. So at this point, what I'm going to go ahead and do is add our, our chicken stock. And you got to keep stirring this. You can't leave this, guys. You can't walk away. You can't uh, call a friend or go on Facebook. Give this a stir. I'm going to add about half right here. 
right now. And keep stirring. This is going to evaporate and become kind of like a paste. You can see already that it's thickening up. And, you know, use a wooden spoon because a whisk might be too laborious for you. I'll add the rest of the stock. <coughs> Keep at it, it'll come together. And basically what you want is all of the lumps to come out. If you wanted to switch to a whisk at this point after adding the uh, rest of the stock, you can. So I'm gonna keep going with this until I get a nice paste and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so the roux has really come together into a very, very thick consistency as you can see. At this point what I want to do is go ahead and add my room temperature milk. Start this off with my spoon. Oh, it looks good already. It's coming together. And then I'm going to just switch to my whisk just to make sure there's no lumps. And I'm going to let this simmer just for a little bit. Keep stirring. You can see it's coming together. It's not lumpy anymore. And I'll be right with you. Hey everyone, welcome back. I just stirred this for a bit, but as you can see, it's from stirring, it's becoming very thick. So at this point, what I'm going to do is gradually add in my shredded cheese. Now, as I said, I have a pound here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it in slowly. Oh, cheese, please. It's about half to begin with. And I'm going to give that a stir and let it melt. And then I'm going to add the other half and I'll be back to show you what I do next. Right guys, so I've added the other half of the cheese and you can see how thick and lovely it's becoming. Now if you wanted to thin it out a bit, you could add uh, a little bit of milk. If it's room temperature, that's fine. Now at this point, you'll notice I haven't added salt. The reason being is because the stock has salt, the bacon has salt, and the cheese has salt. So what I recommend you do at this point is add some pepper for sure and then once the soup is done taste it if you need to add salt go ahead add the salt that's fine but I'm not adding in 
any salt right now. Right, so now at this point, go ahead and add your beer. You can see that thins it out somewhat too. It gives it a nice kind of like orangey kind of color too. Then what I'm going to do is add my tablespoon of Frank's or if you want Tabasco. I'm going to do a overflow tablespoon because <laughs> I love it. And also at this point, you can go ahead and add your Worcester sauce. A tablespoon of that. Okay, that's it. Ooh, smells so good. Just kind of wait for that. Franks and that Worcester. Oh guys, it looks so good. Now I reserved some of that bacon um, to crumble on top as a garnish and you can also garnish it with chives or some scallions which I have. So that's it, it's pretty much done and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop a lid on this. Well first I should Taste it. I don't have a little bit of Worcester here left. All right. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to taste it to see if I need to season this with a bit of salt. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm. Guys, I'm not going to add any salt. It's perfect, and now I know why people line up for this soup. It's incredible. So I'm going to pop a lid on this, and I'm going to let it simmer on low for about 15 minutes, and we'll serve it up. So hey everyone, the Canadian cheddar cheese soup is done. So all I have to do is to plate some up. So I've had my soup simmer for a bit and it's nice and thick. I'm going to put some in my bowl here. Oh, it smells so good. You have no idea. Right, so I have some soup here and I'm going to top this with some scallion, just a bit. Then I have that lovely crispy bacon that I reserved as a topping. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. I'm going to serve this with some garlic bread. for dipping and all us have to do is dig in. So guys, thanks so much for watching the Euro Cooking Canuck and we'll see you next time on another episode of Clearly Canadian. I'm going to show you a few pictures of this in the end and I really hope that you make this recipe. Please subscribe, please like, please put your comments down below and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Ciao. Merci beaucoup.